So this video is a demonstration of me performing an intrapartum vaginal exam um, and then doing fetal heart rate auscultation for annual exam. So here we have my client. She's sitting with baby on her belly. And then first, um, usually one of the first things you do when a mom is admitted into care is do a vaginal exam if she consents um, to check and see cervical dilation, effacement, station of baby, position of baby, and see how things are going. So after gaining consent that mom would like to, I help her into this reclined position. And if we don't have stirrups, usually I have them kind of butterfly it and put their, their soles of their feet together with their knees relaxed out. Um, I would have washed my hands and donned sterile gloves. I do not have any sterile gloves, so we're pretending. And then an assistant would help me put on sterile lube to begin the exam. And then we've got our pelvis here and our baby is in it already. So I would start by telling mom, you're going to feel my touch. Um, and kind of just touch her on the leg, let her know that you're there, and then describe what I'm doing as I go through it. So going in and looking around, feeling for that cervix. The cervix is very thin, baby is already low, and if I just apply a little bit of pressure, I feel that she is engaged. She's not floating back up into the belly, so that's good. Um, and then I'm feeling just around your cervix, Feeling how thin it is, seems like we're about, um, we'll give her 100% of face, but only uh, 7 centimeters dilated so far. And then feeling baby feels pretty even with the ischial tuberosity, so I would give that a zero station. And then um, feeling baby's head. Well, first we're going to feel the cervix to see if there's any abnormal, like if there's a lip or any swelling or something, um, but there's not. So then we feel baby's position by searching my sutures and my fontanelles and seeing where those lie in relation to mom. And we're going to give this baby pretty straightforward OA, but maybe a little LOA. So then... I would tell mom all this information as I'm doing it, and I'd say, all right, we're all done. Let me take that out. And seven centimeters would be great for mom to come in at that time. Um, sometimes the, they come in earlier than that, but I gave her seven. So after that, I would help mom out of that position and document everything. But we're going to move on to listening to fetal heart tones. I've got my Doppler apply my gel to it and then we're going to keep this covered because there's literally just a baby doll laying on top of her. So I'll just pretend this is her bare skin. And then from my charts and from feeling before and with the vaginal exam, all signs point to this baby being LOA. So I am going to be listening in this quadrant right over here. There's a whole other side it's going to be, so listening and for um, my initial one, I want to listen between contractions and get a baseline. So I'm listening for at least a minute um, and giving one single digit number, not a range. And throughout, throughout the rest of the labor, um, we want to listen starting at the peak of the contraction and then about 30 seconds falling through to 30 seconds following that contraction, noting if there's any decelerations or um, the regular rhythm and rate. So during active labor, I want to be listening every 15 to 30 minutes. I usually lean towards more the 30, just not to interrupt pattern. Um, and then during second stage, during our pushing, 
I want to listen every five minutes or every other contraction is an easier way to keep track of that. So um, if I'm beginning to hear anything concerning like decelerations that are abnormal, late B cells or something, um, then you'd want to listen a little bit more often or discuss with the family about um, the option to transfer at that time because they're not if birth is not imminent, then I'd want additional help for monitoring. But after that, I would wipe mom up and then help her sit back up and then we'd move on and let her continue her labor.